Hello everyone, we hope you're keeping safe. In today's discussion, we take a stock of various macro and market events that are relevant for our market in the, and that transpired in the month of June. To start with, we first take a stock on the COVID situation in India. COVID situation improved in the month of June. The fresh infection rate moderated by 90% from the May's peak. And all the statistics that are being observed, such as the fatality rate, total active cases, and the number of diagnostic tests which had turned positive, uh, all of them showed an improvement in the month of June. And yet, the state governments have been very slow and calibrated to ease the lockdown conditions. In fact, the state of Maharashtra tightened it a notch last week. So what is event actually the concern? Actually, select medical experts as well as policy makers fear the prospects of research in, of COVID cases in India, something which they term as third wave. The virus has mutated itself into a form which is now being termed as Delta plus variant, which is feared to be more transmissible and hence the cautiousness on the policy makers and government side. So what is an end game to this virus? Perhaps it appears that as vaccination picks up, that could only put an end to the spreading and mutating risk of the virus. India made some progress in the vaccination in the month of June, as compared to on an average 1.8 million doses being, deliver, uh, being administered in May 2021. In the month of June, we saw 3.8 million doses on an average per day being delivered. And this could be scaled up further in the coming months, given the supply commitments that India has, provided people are forthcoming to get themselves vaccinated. So until that happens, the COVID risk remains. Now, coming to the next topic of discussion, whereby we take a stock of the progress of economic activity. Now that we are more than a year into the pandemic, businesses as well as government has learned to adapt themselves and operate in the COVID situation. Yet, whenever the infection rate rises, some moderation in activity cannot be ruled out. Similarly, in the month of June, if we look at various activities and aggregate them into some sort of an index that we did, we saw in the month of May, the overall activity moderate by 20% vis-a-vis March 21 levels. As infection rate moderated in June, two-thirds of this drop was retraced. But given that we are highlighting the COVID risk, again, the moderation or the pace is still uncertain to us. Within the economic activity realm, various sectors are performing differently. To start with, there is a push from the government on the CAPEX front, and we can see a healthy spend on government CAPEX. That is positive. Another positive element is the upcycle in global demand, and hence various sectors which rely on global upcycle are benefiting. That said, in coming months, some moderation in global goods trade cannot be ruled out as consumers shift back their preferences to the services and away from good. But on a broad realm of thing, global upcycle and the related sector strength still holds in the coming quarters. Similar is the case with the uh, agriculture sector. And similar is the case with the overall financial services in India and the commodity sector commodity related sectors. So commodity prices has surged by nearly 60% in last 14 months. While that poses an inflation risk, it benefits the commodity producers, particularly in the energy and metal space. And in fact, those are the segments where we have seen maximum rating upgrade, earnings upgrade in the equity segment. Agriculture sector, just as we spoke, is supported by the rising global exports of Indian anti-commodities, better global prices, government support in the form of meaningful procurement, as well as additional subsidy allocation towards food and fertilizer, and very recently, a good trend on the monsoon progress. 
while the agriculture sector in the rural area is supported we are not so positive about the other segments of the rural demand like we were a couple of quarters ago not only that the entire household consumption demand both in the rural and urban segment is a relatively weaker link in the indian economy unlike the global uh, counterparts where there has been a check doled out from government to the consumers a similar strength of support had not been there in the case of india the indian household saving as a percentage of gdp has by the end of quarter 3 fy21 had broadly returned to the pre covid trend which tells you that there is not of not enough of accumulated savings with the indian households to run down and consume consumer confidence is perhaps at the weakest employment situation overall is not as bright as it was or not as to the level as it was in the pre covid level pre covid trends and hence we see consumer demand to be the weakest link in the overall realm of demand so what does various positive and negative aspects mean from the perspective of growth outlook while we are constructive on the growth recovery and we see potential of growth revival in india coming from the fact that the corporate balance sheet is healthy there is a massive policy support rates are at ultra low but we don't see it to be a linear right it will perhaps be patchy till we get there in the medium term that is on the economy now coming to the earnings update quarter 4 fy21 earnings have come to a close typically whenever the sales growth is weak one would also expect a weak profit margin for the businesses but that has not been case in fy21 while the overall sales growth was weak profit margins were stellar and that was because particularly larger businesses and corporates in the listed space had done a good job in managing their costs in fact in quarter 4 fy21 owing to good profit we also saw the big corporates deleveraging which made them bring down their interest expenses to a record low level when compared to the total sales so on the other side of covid while indian government and indian households are more levered up indian corporates have come out with a healthy balance sheet and they have delivered significantly in fy21 given all this backdrop we are relatively more constructive on the earnings outlook in a medium term we don't rule out that it will be a patchy ride just as we again highlighted the demand risk also we do not rule out some moderation in the gross profit margins particularly in those sectors which are commodity users because the raw material cost is on the rise but overall we do find some return of pricing power in the indian corporates so our theory of the earnings up cycle is broadly rested on uh, some demand revival low cost of borrowing and a healthy balance sheet plus consolidation seen across several sectors in in the indian corporates so overall for the equity market as a whole we are more constructive from a medium term perspective though as we highlighted last month as well we do not rule down some correction in the near term as can be pointed out by various indicators as well that is our update on the equity market side now coming to the air debt market side while things are more constructive on the equity there has been a host of uh, unfavorable development for the fixed income market and june has been an eventful one first to start with cpi inflation reported in india we got may 2021 cpi inflation print which was nearly 1 percentage point higher than market and rbi expectation and it took the market by surprise we don't we were expecting inflation to be a relatively elevated one because the supply demand mismatch as well as the disruptions because of covid is still prevalent 
And also, there are risks to rise in goods and services inflation in India because of the higher fuel cost and higher other commodity or input prices. But the May month data still took all of us by surprise. Agreeably, there was a smaller sample size which was collected for the CPI data formulation uh, both in the April and May 2020 and April and May 2021. So that also leads to some bit of noise in the CPI inflation. And in fact, one should ideally wait for a more uh, data in the coming months when there is a better sample size to get the true strength of a true momentum of the inflation in Indian economy. But I, what is what will be more important to watch is how RBI reacts to the elevated data print and relatively higher inflation vis-a-vis their own expectation. We want to make one point here that even as the inflation is on the rise, the demand-led pressures, as can be gauged from the credit growth, household consumption demand, is still not there. So there are no signs of overheating in the economy to which a monetary policy typically reacts. But yes, again, the August policy will be watched out for. The other developments in the global space as well wasn't very favorable. First, to start with, the decision of the U.S. Central Bank. U.S. Fed. Uh, up until uh, uh, June policy, U.S. Fed was talking about no rate hike before 2023. But in the latest policy, they called for a two rate hike in 2023. Consequently, market also now expects a rate hike to come as early as in December 2020. So market has reacted to that. U.S. Treasury curve has reacted to that. There has been flattening with two-year segment rising. Apart from that, uh, even the crude prices and other commodity prices have stayed elevated in June, which is not cheered by the fixed income participants. Apart from that, there have been select emerging market central banks, such as uh, Russia, Brazil, Mexico, which has delivered rate hike in last couple of months because the CPI inflation in their country shot past the, uh, their central bank's target bank. So a similar fear had risen in the mind of Indian investors. Though at this point, we would like to reiterate that of late, RBI has been highlighting a relatively greater tolerance for the inflation overshoot as compared to what they did in the pre-COVID uh, times and pre-COVID policies. But yet, like we said, the August policy will be watched out keenly by the market participants. So all these factors have led to volatility in the rates and currency segment. And these volatility may persist in the coming months as well. Overall, from the fixed income perspective, the fundamentals, mainly in the form of growth trajectory, a uh, couple of quarters down the line, inflation trajectory in the near term, the reinflation thesis, the commodity price risk, and a whole, and an expectation that probably the easy financial conditions that are persisting right now may have to be unbound in the near future does not pay pose a favorable dynamics or a favorable fundamental for the fixed income space. And apart from that, in the Indian space, the supply of government bonds have been on the higher side, both in FY21 and in FY22. And the natural demand for that from the market participants is moderating. Hence, RBI support has become more crucial than ever. Given the fact that the yield curve is managed or anchored at the level where it is because of a material RBI support, the overall dynamics are a bit on the conservative side for the fixed income market returns. Yeah, so that is a brief snapshot on the equity and fixed income market. We hope you like this and we hope to catch up soon next month. Thank you. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.